I know you've all seen them, the piston videos that are out there that are all clickbait. Today, we're gonna talk about something really cool on Unity Motorsports Garage, a piston video that will actually make power. Stick around, let's get into it. When you think about it, the piston in your engine has a very tough job and it's a very thankless job. And most people, when they're building an engine, they concentrate on cylinder heads, intakes, and camshafts, and all of these other things. But there's one thing that I've noticed that most people tend to neglect. It's time to port your pistons. Now, I know what you're saying. You're thinking, Andy, you're crazy, porting your pistons. Well, if you watched my last video about bore shrouding, you see just how important airflow through the engine actually is. Most cylinder head guys think the cylinder head is the end all be all, but it's not. The cylinder bore is a continuation of the combustion chamber and the intake track. So that is what I would call permanent shrouding. But today I'm gonna to coin a term called momentary shrouding. So there's two reasons to do this piston porting. The first one being airflow, and then the second one you're gonna to have to keep watching. So when the piston is coming up from bottom dead center towards top dead center, there's something very important happening inside the combustion chamber. Any camshaft will be opening the valve prior to this piston reaching top dead center. Well, what happens when this thing is actually at top dead center and going back down. That valve that is opening is inside this pocket. You may say, well, it's gotta fit in there. You gotta have the valve relief. That's true, you have to have the valve relief, but how is the air being affected by the backside of this relief? I pose that question to you. So what is happening during this crucial low lift flow period? Simple, it's called overlap. The piston is at the top of the bore, both valves are open, and I think the transaction of airflow that's taking place at overlap is very understated because there are tremendous forces involved here. Now remember this, you never get a second chance to fill the cylinder if you miss the boat the first time. So you only get one chance to get it right. So if you relieve the valve relief, lay it back, you can negate some of that loss. What I'm getting ready to show you is something that Daniel Powell has on one of his videos. If you do not know who Daniel Powell is, a Powell machine, go subscribe, take a look at his stuff. But this video really hits the nail on the head because he is a learner like I am. You've got to see it and picture it, and then it becomes embedded in your mind, and you can't unsee it at that point. Okay, let's take a look at this video. What you're seeing here is a cutaway engine that he has done so that he can actually see the valve and timing events as they're opening and closing in relation to the piston. This is very important for this video because you get an idea. Now, porting pistons is not necessarily going to affect, say, a stock type rebuild as much as it's going to affect a high compression, something that has a lot of overlap, aggressive camshaft timing. That's where you're really going to see this pay off because of the amount of time at the valve and the rate of the valve is accelerating open. So you can see in this video that the intake valve is opening, the exhaust is open, and the piston's at the top. Well, what's actually happened is, as the intake valve begins to open, the piston is coming up, dwell time at TDC, and then the valve chases the piston down the bore. And that's typically where you're going to see valve to piston contact is somewhere past uh, top dead center. The reason why this is happening is the valve's accelerating faster than the piston is going down into bore. 
So what's the answer? You've got to have a valve relief. But what is happening to the airflow that's coming in at that low lift? You've got to remember how a port works. At low lift, the airflow is actually still stuck to the short turn radius and is trying to come out that way. When it hits the sharp turn or sharp edge of the valve relief, it's actually creating turbulence. It's not happy. You've got to remember air is a like electricity. It's lazy. It wants to go where it can. So here is the piston that's going in Mission Impossible 318. One of the things that I want to talk about is when engine builders assemble an engine, they check for valve to piston clearance. They normally do it one or two ways. They'll either take an indicator and measure from the top of the valve to see how much lateral clearance there is or downward clearance and then you've got the people who use the clay method me on an engine that i'm putting together from scratch such as this i will actually do both and the reason why i do the clay method is because i want to know the radial clearance between the edge of the valve and the back side of this valve relief that is crucial now that we know that we actually have a problem with airflow in the valve pocket, how do we alleviate it? It's as simple as taking a sandpaper cartridge roll and laying this edge back on the intake side here, making a radius into the pocket. Now you might think I'm crazy, but about the time that I met DV, I was knee deep in 4.6 stuff which has very small bores, and I was cutting my own notches in pistons at that time. And what I would do as I would cut this notch, it would leave it rough. So what I would do is take sandpaper and I would take and round the edge of it off and smooth everything out. That way there was no rough cut lines in it and all of that. Well, getting to meet David I actually told him what I was doing and he said oh you're poured in your pistons and I was like do what and he was like yeah you're poured in the pistons he went on to tell me that in his big block Chevrolet book that he found by adjusting the shape of the piston actually there's points in the intake cycle that the air wants to go out the shrouded side and guess what it hits the piston crown. So he was telling me about piston mods that you could actually do that would make nearly 20 horsepower difference on a big block. That's pretty, pretty substantial. You have to understand the amount of time that this piston is near dwell at top dead center. Now my math is kind of shady, but you've got to remember with a Mopar, you're dealing with a 6.123 inch rod, with a 3.33 one stroke, which comes up to be a 1.84 rod ratio. And if my math is right, and please put it in the comments if I'm wrong, but this thing has pretty much a hang time at top dead center of nearly 13 to 15 degrees. So not only do you have the valve in the pocket, you also waste in cam timing because the cam's purpose is to open the valve to let more air in, right? What has actually happened? You're wasting that overlap and that duration of the camshaft because it's not being utilized to its max. But these little small differences add up and can make the difference between winning and losing. So that's part one, airflow. What's the second reason to do this? <laughs> The second reason to port your pistons is related to safety of the engine itself. So the shape of the piston crown, the valve reliefs, the dome, the dish, all come into play as to whether or not you're going to have maybe a ticking time bomb. And what I'm getting, when I say ticking time bomb, I'm really referring to time and sensitivity. This looks like a nice piston, and it is. CNC machined up top, the sides, the skirt. 
Well, the problem with CNC pistons is the sharp edge that's left here, okay? If you go back about 40 years and you look at the top of a TRW piston, the valve notches were actually part of the forging. It wasn't machined. So think about this. This sharp edge right here, and a typical piston, I'm going to say, is somewhere in the neighborhood of about 700 degrees, give or take, on a, just a regular street strip engine. With forced induction and nitrous, that changes dramatically. So what ends up happening is you start getting uneven temperature around the top of the piston crown. Most of the temperature is going to be on the exhaust side of the piston because as the intake valve opens, the intake charge comes in and you have a boundary layer of fuel that helps keep the piston cool, which is a good thing on that side of the piston. Well, on the opposite side of that, you have all of the heat right underneath the spark plug and if it's nitrous that's being injected, wherever that nitrous plum is coming in to the combustion chamber, that's where the heat's going to be concentrated. Any sharp edge inside the combustion chamber and the top of the piston can become a glow plug. If you don't believe me, take a torch to this piston, get up the piston crown, and just see just how fast those sharp edges start to glow red. You will be surprised, I promise you. So we know from testing over the years that the flat top piston is best for flame propagation. It will make the most power. A dish can actually make more power if the dish is shaped properly. Because what you're doing, you've got to think about this, is you're unshrouding that valve. There's more distance between the crown of the piston and that valve so the air can get around and do whatever it needs to do. Then you come over here and you look at this puppy. Now this is a very complicated looking piston crown. Once again, you notice the CNC cut. It looks really good, it's shiny. There is no way I would put this piston in an engine as seen form right here because all of these sharp edges become heat risers and heat risers can become piston melters. Whether you're porting your pistons for airflow or you're doing it for a degree of safety as far as combustion temperature and heat risers, and I'm gonna put a picture in. I, this just actually happened to a buddy of mine. You don't think what I'm saying is true? Take a look at this picture. This will change your mind. Piston actually start to fail right at the corner of the valve pocket where it's thinnest and it's sharpest. Not a coincidence. And to make matters even worse, let's take a look at a modern piston, like a Coyote piston that's high compression. This thing is insanely crazy. All of the sharp edges on top of it, yeah, I wouldn't have a problem putting it in an NA application, but you put this thing under some serious boost or some serious nitrous, and I guarantee you, you're going to have problems. So until next time, this is Andy from Unity Motorsports Garage. Port your pistons, make some power, and this is not clickbait. Catch y'all later.